God bless his thirsty Broadway heart. Hey, Idra says we killed it in the read through today. First with that good news energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I've loved living with Ashlyn, but moms are the best. Uh, for real. I just got a bomb care package from my mom, my old Camp Rock poster. Yes, it's my comfort movie. Always knows what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Court. I'm good. Come on, I want to get in my cozy clothes for the minute. <laughs> Can I talk to you? This is why EJ should talk to Gina, because now he's putting Val in an awkward position. So I want to ask, know. is there any way we could watch Camp Rock instead? Like, as a favor? Oh, uh, this is about the screening? Yeah. Of course. You're a good friend. And girlfriend. I can tell. I've never done the girlfriend thing before, so I couldn't tell if it was something off with him or if it's... I can tell. You're good people. This isn't complicated at all. Hey! The prodigal son returns. I just wanted to grab something to eat. We were all really worried about you. Well, I'm back now. Everyone can stop crying. EJ had to sing Love is Good. Open Door. Let him know, <laughs> Sounds Val. like I'm pretty replaceable. So prove you're not. Well, of course, she's an event planning genius, too. I even heard her give some amazing tough love advice to that Jet kid. Wait, he's back? Very sister act, too. You're kind of being a jerk. Uh, I'm like, does her hair have to be so perfect every single day? It's like, we're in the woods. Oh, Ashlyn. Uh, Fine. Stop hating on people. That's not you. Sounds a lot like the way I used to talk about Madison, is all I'm saying. <clears throat> but keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Which is famously hard for me. <clears throat> not telling everyone the whole truth about her situation. Do not do well with liars. Ricky in the back. Ricky, up I'll tell her about the letter after the movie. I swear. I already got a lecture from Val. I mean, really Ricky don't need one from you. she was talking about him. The movie was fun. She finally got the lead he did. It means a lot. You can't not show up. This upset that I took off, or is this really about Gina? I just want what's best for her. Friends. I can hear the air quotes. Good. Hmm. Just push away your only friend, Jack. Just lost all red. Mama bear! It's perfect. Uh, thank you. Did something happen? I, I just wanted to hear your voice. Honey, we knew camp would be challenging. I should be having a great time. No, no. There is no should. You feel how you feel. Ugh, that is such an important line. It's such a simple line. I just need to pause this because I was legitimately just having a conversation about this thing, this exact situation with my friend. Her boyfriend's mother just passed. And we were talking about how she's like, I didn't know that I was going to be affected this bad. It's just so emotional. Everything's so heightened. Everything's so crazy. I just wish that I didn't feel like this. And we literally had that conversation where you're going to feel what you feel. That's what it is. You know, you could say you have regrets. You could say you should have did this. You should have did that or whatever it may be. But you are going to feel what you feel. And you just have to embrace that. And that is so important what she just said to Courtney. Oh, I love her mom. Fine. No, no. There is no should. You feel how you feel. Mm -hmm. I don't really like being away from home. Which... Which is silly because what happens when I start college? All my extracurriculars. I mean, should I be volunteering at nonprofits? I mean, is it a bad? Just breathe, breathe. Anxious all the time about this stuff, and it's, it's not getting better. I mean, we don't have to do anything that you're not ready for. I'm not going anywhere, Courtney. She got me all choked up. So put together oh, hey, and strong and see that. Way. that hey, can you just grab Gina for me, please? Issues. I really need to talk to her. Everybody oh, no, has their stress. stress. I just, I really need to talk to Gina. You're going to tell me that this, I don't oh, know what a yurt is. Gosh. You're not coming back? What's going on? <gasps> They're not going to do the documentary. Look, man, we were pretty much perfect in the end. You said so yourself. That's kind of the problem. Juicy drama. Spilled tea. Without that, this may not be the right group for this project. Literally no drama, and that is the problem. I can't let my friends down. I'm gonna stir up some drama, bitch. Caswells do mighty things. Is he gonna say Ricky? If you need drama. Oh my god. Even mind it. Oh my god. Oh my god, I am terrified. And then be like, it's in the name of the play. <gasps> yeah? 
much does he have to Did you know about this letter? I really hate not having the promo after. Like, I want to watch it. All right, so there you have it. Episode four, no drama. And that was the problem. I'm over here going into it anxious being like, oh, what's the drama gonna be? That was literally the problem. There's no drama. And they can't make a good juicy documentary because let's be honest, we watch reality shows for what? The drama. The only difference here is that there is sustenance to the main story, which is it's a Frozen musical. So people who like musicals, like people like us, are just going to enjoy the story and enjoy watching the process of it all. In documentaries such as this, you don't really need too much of that drama, but I get what they're saying, I get the point. So EJ here at the end says, I can get you some drama, and I'm only to assume that it is has to be the Ricky, EJ, Gina situation. What other drama situation could he be so easily thinking of? Like, obviously, you could start a fight with anybody. You could start drama with anybody in any situation. But for him to snap into it and be like, I could definitely get you some drama. It has to be him fighting with, with Ricky. The only thing is, this clearly is going to cause problems in his relationship. But I guess EJ is approaching it as well, I'm doing it to save our relationship, ironically, and I'm doing it to save the musical. Like, the, there, were, mm, there were so many layers in this episode that the gravity of the situation just skyrocketed. EJ was supposed to take a gap year, which would have enabled him to be in next season because he would be around for that year. But he gets this letter being accepted into this program that his dad wants him to go to. He doesn't tell Gina about this. I can't remember where he said it was, but it was somewhere far. That was his first mistake. He definitely should have told Gina. You're the one who's been in relationships before. You're the one who has more experience. In general, you should know to, to share those important things with people that you care about, especially if it's your partner. So the fact that he didn't tell her is kind of messed up, but I get why he didn't tell her because he's scared and he's upset and he's nervous. It's not like, I don't want to tell her because I really want to go and she's going to think I'm leaving her. He's like, I don't want to freaking go. This was supposed to be our perfect summer. It's getting ruined. Now this gap year was supposed to be our perfect year before we get separated and now it's not. So it's like little by little things that are perfect and happy for EJ just keep getting chipped off. That gives a whole new meaning as to why he is so worried about the Frozen musical. He wanted the musical to go well not only because it's Gina's first lead not only because he has the responsibility of being director, not only because it's being televised and Corbin Blue is involved, but because if he succeeds at this, he can prove to his father that, hey, look what I'm doing. It's important. And I make moves and I make things happen. I can prove to you that I what I am doing here is important and it's good and I can do this. It's not a pipe dream. So I don't have to go do that thing now, right? That's what he's thinking, which it, it makes perfect sense. However, the problem is he's not executing it properly because of all of this stress and pressure that he's holding in. He's holding in all these secrets. He's trying to take on too much and he's spiraling and he's freaking out and he doesn't know how to control it. And now it's being conveyed to other people that it's different things. They're being misled because they're thinking it's other situations. Like Gina, I guarantee you, now that she asked here at the end, Val, did you know about this letter? Val's going to tell her the truth, I'm assuming. She's going to say yes. So Gina, if I was Gina, I would think EJ's hiding this from me because he wants to go. And I just told him that my mom is moving back which she was so happy about. We know how important that is because we know how sad she was to have to finally move after finding a place where she feels accepted and she's made friends and feels loved and important and has like these really, really important connections. And we also knew how upsetting it was for her to lose her mom. So 
for her to get her mom back and have a home with her family and be really close to EJ, this was all so important for her. So for if I was Gina to see this letter, I would be like, is he hiding this from me because he wants to go? Just had that conversation while they were watching Camp Rock about how she hates liars. So this is really bad. This does not look good. This episode was very much so about anxiety, feeling too overwhelming. Exhibit A, Courtney. Poor Courtney is spiraling. And that was just such a wonderful conversation that she had with her mother about how you feel what you feel. You feel what you feel and that's what you feel. Stop giving situations the power of controlling you when you can't control those situations. If you can't control something, let it be. You can't worry about it. You can't spiral over it. You can't get upset about it. You just have to take things as they come and deal with them as they come. And that's one of the hardest things to do in life. It's easier said than done. But it's, it's something that if you work at and eventually work through, it will make you feel so much better and it will make you feel so good to just let the stress go and not center in and focus in and worry about every little thing. I'm a spiraler. I've gotten slightly better, but I've been the worst panicky spiraler that that you could ever think of where I think of like 30 steps ahead every situation all the negative outcomes I have a prepared method for each situation I you know just so I'm prepared in case this happens I do this in case this happens I do that what if that happens oh my gosh I spiral like crazy, but I've learned to try and gain these kind of coping mechanisms or things that I can implement when I notice that I start to spiral. So I, I, one of my biggest things is I just breathe, which is funny because that's what Courtney's mom said to do. It's sometimes the only thing that you can do. If I start feeling like I'm getting in my head and I'm, oh, oh my gosh, and my heart is elevated and, uh, Just breathe. And it's almost like you breathing in pushes everything out of your head. And then you exhaling releases it all. I literally will just tell myself to stop. Just stop. Breathe. Clear your head. Calm down. And it helps. So poor Court. I love her. But I love that she got that advice from her mom. I love that Gina is such a good friend and gets them to watch Camp Rock instead. What a sweetheart. But I am... Glad that they picked a character such as Courtney to have this anxiety because, as I said in the reaction, Courtney is strong. She is independent. She is confident. And she is the perfect person to have this happen to because it shows that even the most strong, confident, independent person has anxiety. Has anxiety. It's a normal thing. It's an awful thing to deal with, but it's a normal thing to deal with. Ashlyn freaking Regina George mean girl status. No, she hasn't been that bad yet, but she was treating Maddox so poorly and then mended things and started becoming her friend in this episode and then kind of like roped her in to her gossipy negative conversation about Val. And I just don't think that I like Ashlyn in this light. She's just getting worse and worse. Like she is talking mad shit about Val and Val's so nice. So I just think that this whole lead role bell situation really got to her head. I can see how being in a lead role and then going to that would kind of cut you down a few pegs, but you don't have to be so mean. What is really bothering me, and someone else mentioned this in the comments, why is Ashlyn not happy for Gina and Courtney? Like, I get that she's happy for them and she's just upset at the same time, but she, I feel like she should be a little more happy. Those are your two best friends. Support them. Don't sulk in your... Like, I, I have a rule, okay? I have a rule. When I'm upset about something, I cry it out. I get Hiss. I get angry. I get frustrated. And then I let it go. Ironically. I swear I didn't even plan that. 
I do though. I really do. I, I punch it out in my head and then I let it go. Because again, as we were just talking about with the anxiety issues, you can't let these things take over you. You can't try and control situations that you can't control. So Ashlyn, what you're doing isn't going to make you the lead. Embrace being in the ensemble, support your friends and be proud of them and try harder next time. And if you don't get it, you do the same thing and then you try harder next time. It's almost as if Ashlyn doesn't believe that Gina and Courtney should play those parts and should have gotten it over her. That's what it's starting to look like. And I'm, that's why I was glad when Gina called her out on it in the last episode. I didn't see her acting like this. And now again, the fact that she's bringing Val into it and disrespecting her. But again, this whole episode was definitely anxiety, edgy based. And so every character is freaking out. We have Maddox talking about Madison was it? How that was her past love at camp. She said that they hated each other at first, then they fell in love, but what happened after that? Is it something like camp ended and so the relationship ended? I'm assuming that that is Jojo Siwa and we are going to have Jojo come back and we'll get more information as to what's going on there. But I really love that even though a Ashlyn's acting a little crazy, <laughs> I really love that we have this friendship being built between Maddox and Ashlyn because it's, it's, you could see how cute it was when Maddox was smiling and I loved that. Poor Val, she's just getting all of EJ's secrets poured onto her and I mean, hey, that's what friends do, right? We're here to listen and vent, but she's putting, being put in a weird position and a difficult position by EJ because now we have things like this happening where Gina's going to her and asking her things. Honestly, if I was in Gina's place, I would probably would have asked Val the same thing. But Gina should go to EJ and talk to him about it. Jet left. Jet came back. Jet is old Jet now. We lost happy, positive, fun Jet. Ricky comes in and he's like, is this about Gina or is it about Hans? I'm worried about Gina. I want Gina's first thing to go well. Gina, 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 Gina. Kind of calls him out on his past feelings and Ricky doesn't want to talk about that. So he runs away. That's pretty much what he did from the beginning with Gina. But anyway, I'm, I'm, don't kill me. Don't kill me. No, but really, Rick, Ricky runs away because he's upset and he's heightened. And I think that Ricky running away now in these situations isn't like old Ricky running away from the situation. Old Ricky would run away and hide. I think new Ricky runs away to try and clear his head and get a better grasp on what he's thinking and how he's feeling and how to approach the situation, which I really love for his character because as I said, I'm rewatching. Did I say that? Maybe I said it in the promo. I'm rewatching the first two seasons. I'm at the end of the first season and the growth that these characters have had is just unbelievable. Ricky and EJ especially. I'm watching the first season and I'm like, I don't like either of them. I remember watching the first season, which of my first season and second season reactions are all on uh, Patreon unedited, and I they're mostly on YouTube. All my season two are and half of my season ones are. But anyway, I remember watching the first season and being like, I do not like Ricky. I He broke Nini's heart. He was talking to all these other girls, but talking about her, but you still went and talked to a bunch of other girls during the summer, never contacted her. Now you come back and you're all jealous of EJ, trying to ruin her play, doing all these things. I, I did not like Ricky. I loved EJ. And then EJ stole her phone and I was like, EJ, you psychopath. What the heck? Thinking and reminiscing about things that happened in season two, the way that Ricky handles all these situations is just so crazy and spontaneous and he snaps like in season two where he takes her phone and erases the tweet tweet erases that message and is like which is ironically equivalent to what ej did in season one by deleting the voicemail the way that ricky reacted and responded to things in the first two seasons is not how he's responding to them in this season i feel because he seems like he's got a lot more of a level-headed open mind now. Going into this Rena Portwell situation, I like I want a clean slate. I don't want to think, well, Ricky did this in the past and EJ did this in the past and Ricky did this in the past and EJ did this in the past. There's been so much growth and change in each character 
that I just want a clean slate. I think it was season two, episode six, when we find out that Gina, he gives Nini the necklace and then Gina comes in and was like, I would never give up on us. I wasn't leaving. It broke my heart because I'm like, you're going to her for advice, a relationship advice, asking her all these things, constantly talking about Nini, acting like your buddy, buddy. And the whole time, the whole time you knew this girl was in love with you. It was so inconsiderate. I think Ricky now is trying to be overly considerate when it comes to Gina. So I truly feel like Ricky is definitely still in love with her. But I think Gina is not only in love with EJ, but so afraid of opening her heart back up to Ricky that... It's like Ricky, there's all, all the unresolved feelings are in Ricky and he's afraid of Gina and there's some resolved, unresolved feelings in Gina, but she's not dare going to go in that direction anymore or, or try to go near that situation because she's afraid she's gotten hurt before and she's, ha she really is happy with EJ. It's not like, oh, I'm just sticking around with EJ and I love Ricky. She really does love Rick, love EJ and I want to be with him. But I think that's, that's what I'm feeling when I said brother, sister feelings and everyone was like, ew, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's, it's this platonic friendship that both of them want to have but there are slight underlying issues but like even now when they're cute but when she's like grabbing the the bucket list from him and he's grabbing it back and she's like ha, ha, ha. yeah it's cute and playful and flirty but at the same time like I would do that with my friends I would do that with Ed, um, all of my friends like you joke around like that you they have this comfortable level with each other but I think that the the looks that everybody reads into like ooh they're giving each other flirty eyes no I think they're petrified I honestly think that's what it is I don't think they're giving each other these flirty passionate looks I think they're like I'm scared to move forward because I don't know where we stand because we're, there's been so much history and it's freaking me out so I just feel like Ricky needs to have a conversation with Gina. I think new Ricky will be level-headed enough to think out that I need to talk to Gina about this. It might not be appropriate for me to say I'm in love with you because you have a boyfriend and all that, but I think it's very, very, very important for Ricky and Gina to have a conversation about everything that happened that never happened. It never happened. They never talked about everything that they were feeling when he dropped her off from the dance. Never talked about everything that she said at the end of the first performance right after he gave Nini the necklace. Never talked about how seeing them, seeing each other with other people made them feel. It, it, he never, he never got to express himself fully and she didn't either. So that is, that is what is unresolved is that conversation. Once we have that conversation, then I will be able to have a better grasp and feel as to what is actually happening. But if you want my 1000% honest opinion I feel like all of the unresolved feelings are one-sided. I feel like Gina looks at him as, oh, it could have been, and I still have a little love for him, but her heart is with EJ. And Ricky, I think, is definitely still in love with Gina, but Ricky falls in love so easily, so it's hard to differentiate if this is just Ricky falling again or if it really is those unresolved feelings. Let's move on. I just ranted about that for an hour. We didn't get too much from Carlos this episode, aside from a wonderful, fabulous number. Oh my gosh, I loved that. I thought it was so good. It was so perfect. We got Love is an Open Door, which... <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about Love is an Open Door. I was slightly disappointed, which is crazy because I'm like, oh my God, Portwell is doing Love is an Open Door. I love it. This is perfect. 
but I kind of wanted to see Jet do it. Like, I've been talking in the comments with a bunch of everyone, uh, saying how excited I was to hear Jet sing Love is an Open Door. And a lot of you were agreeing, like, yeah, Jet's going to sound really good as Love is an Open Door. And then I was like, oh, EJ's getting it. Okay. That's, I, I mean, I kind of would would have liked to see Jet do it. Because I was prepared for Jet to do it. But the fact that EJ's doing it is fantastic because I love his voice. And it's cute that they get to do it with each other. And I thought that Gina looked so cute, so freaking cute in the Anna costume. I just really hated the production value of it. Like, I don't, it wasn't even them singing together. Their voices complement each other so beautifully. And I thought it was really, really cute that they got to do that song together. I didn't like the visuals of everything. Like, I get that they're at the camp, so they kind of have to incorporate that background scene. And they put them in these costumes. EJ's costume was weird. Was it just me? Let's look at it. Let's look this up. I'm going to look this up, actually. Because to be honest with you, it's been so long since I have seen Frozen. Like, I want a side-by-side -side of Hans Frozen. See, it's not even the same. Oh, ooh, that's angry, Hans. It's not even the same costume. I get that this is like this is like a a visual of like, like oh, it's the it's in their imagination, you know? It's not actually their performance, but that's not even close. It looks weird. And that's not EJ's fault. That's not Matt's fault. It's the, the I didn't like the production. Here we go. Franz, fr Franz. Frozen's Hans is one of Disney's most devious and craftiest villains. Jesse, shut up with your rant. That's what it is. There's his little costume of Love is an Open Door. All right, so it's pretty fucking accurate. I reclaim my statements. I don't know. I didn't like it. I'm going to be honest. Sound-wise, the voice is... Oh, that's cute. Sound-wise, their voices were amazing. Sound-wise, I thought they sounded great, and I thought she looked adorable in her costume. Yay! And the swing! Yay! That's what it was. That's what really annoyed me. Did y'all like the swing? I didn't like the swing. I felt like they felt awkward on the swing. They didn't have a lot of places to film this kind of a song and make it make sense. So they're like, we're just going to add a swing in the middle of the camp and have them swing on it. Uh, I just feel like the production value could have been a little better on that one. But anyway, so yeah, we got Love is an Open Door and I, I was really excited about that one and it kind of flopped for me. So last but not least, Corbin, you suck. I feel so bad. I get what they're saying. Uh, you know, they need drama. I love drama. I do. But I like fake drama. I don't like reality TV drama. I mean, okay, I do like reality TV, TV drama, but I don't need it. And I feel like we get so wrapped up in the negativity and drama of everything. Like, you, who actually enjoys watching other people be upset and miserable? Like, that's just sick. That's sad. So the fact that you're saying you need this in order for the documentary to work is just crazy. These adults are manipulating these children into believing that that is necessary. Like they, EJ is again, going through the stress of his family at home, the college situation, the Gina situation, everything is just piling on top of him. And now after all that, Corbin's like, yeah, go stir up some drama. And he's so freaked out by everything not going the way that he thought it was going to go, that he's actually going to do this and create drama. So it's just so upsetting that Corbin and his little camera friend are doing that. I still love Portwell. I still want to see Portwell. I am still slightly open to Rena. But we have to have conversation with Ricky and Gina before I make a decision on that. When EJ said, don't overstep there, Bowen, or whatever he said, I don't think EJ should have said it like that. But I also think Ricky needs to be more aware of the things he's doing and saying. Ricky, I feel like, is the type of person that would push you off a bridge and then be like, oops, sorry. That's a terrible analogy. Ricky is so unaware 
of how he actually, how his actions actually make people feel. I think that's what it is. He is unaware of how his actions actually make other people feel, but he's becoming more aware. So again, do I think EJ should have been like, don't overstep Bowen? No. But do I think e- that Ricky should have been like, oh, I'll do Love is an Open Door after EJ just suggested it and was like, I'm going to do it? No. So, <laughs> oh, everything's falling apart, isn't it? Everything's going to go to shit in the fifth episode. We have five, six, seven, and eight. We have four more episodes. I guess we'll have to wait until the promo on Sunday. Hey, everyone, throw a like or dislike like if you do. Do not like what you see, but comment down below. Let me know why. Subscribe if you have not yet. Wait, do Say ring on the link. The bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Don't forget to check the link down in the description for my Patreon. Follow us on all social media. But that is it. So long, everyone. Try and make someone smile today. You never know when you might need it next. Bye. Oh, boy. That was a doozy.